Mike Check 95 along with my cohort. Orphan Joker. And we are continuing our second to last film of Jurassic Park week with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The synopsis of this film, basically from what I got off the interwebs, three years after the events of Jurassic World, Claire and Owen return to the island to save the remaining dinosaurs from volcanic activity while also discovering new scary breeds of gigantic dinosaurs and a conspiracy that threatens the world. Critics rate this film a 4.7 out of 10. And yeah. audience rate this film a 4.8 out of 10. So I wonder why. People didn't like this movie. <laughs> Budget of this film ranged between 170 to 187 million dollars. So I'll probably just put 187 on the screen right now. Yeah, they put extra in there because they put that much in the last one. Box office back. 1.3 point three hundred and ten billion dollars so not as much as the first film by three hundred billion but still made a shit ton of money yeah they made money back so I got some trivia and goofs for this one so trivia time but um uh, there were more animatronics used in this film than there was in the first film probably because yes. there was an outcry from the fans of the first film saying that there was, there was too, much, one. too much CGI. And of course, it was also confirmed in this film that the Rex in this film is the same one from, from the original Jurassic Park. That was another trivia thing, so this is still the same. Rexy from the entire, for the entire series. And this is also very cool, and I mentioned this while uh, uh, watching the film, that the volcanic eruption was finally depicted on film 30 years later after the first novel. Uh, there are some goofs. Uh, there a lot, so a of course. I'm just going to name off three. Um, when Blue squirted blood onto Franklin's face, or I like to call it nerd number two, uh, when he is seen back on camera, there's no blood on his face after it was squirted onto his face. I don't know why that's a goof. He could have just wiped it off easily, but it was like, oh, there's no blood on his face. I would have get it if it was like a quick back and forth scene, but there was like a 20 minute time span. So, I don't know why that's a goof. Not factual travel time from Costa Rica to Northern California, because in the movie it predicts that it takes one day. It doesn't take a day to get from Costa Rica to Northern California. Did they, say, did they say it would take a day? Because it literally, it, there's no way all of those people coming for all those events would get there in a day. I don't think it was said that it would take a day. They said they'd be here by tomorrow, and I'm like, Reading that on the goofs and kind of watching the film, and I'm like, yeah, that takes like three to four days. Yeah. You have to keep those dinosaurs contained for three to four days on a ship, and if we've seen The Lost World, you know what happens when you keep a dinosaur on a, one dinosaur on a ship for too long. Yeah. The last goof that I saw, which I kind of agree with it, um, the wear and tear in the park seems a bit too extreme for three years being abandoned, because the amount of damage on the park that was there when they came back looked like it was the same amount of damage that was done to the first park when they found it in the first film. Because that was 22 years of damage to the first park inside of Jurassic World, and Jurassic World in this film looked like it was sitting there for about 20 plus years. But the well, I'm not. It, I think it looked more like a bunch of animals attacked it, because that's literally what happened. I mean, they had the amber on the ground. Yes, but it's just, it, it, the goof said it looked like it was too extreme for the amount of damage on it. I feel like it wasn't because there was even a stuffed animal and some other animals that, that wouldn't look like that after three years. So I have some comments before I get into the pros and cons. There was artwork uh, done for a Rexy and Spino uh, quote unquote rematch, a Tyrannosaurus and a Spinosaurus rematch, like done while the volcanic eruption was going on and everything, but it was never done and whatnot because they just never shot it. There was also uh, art designs for a white Indoraptor instead of a black one, but it was never used. The white one would have had the white uh, uh, armor with the blue stripe going down its side instead of yellow or green or whatever. If it was white, white and green? Well, it'd be white and blue. White and blue. White with the blue line on the side. And The gold was really weird. For those who play the Jurassic World Alive game, Obviously, this is what it looks like. The white version is what they would have predicted it to be. I think it is funny that another funny. extremely rare and elusive uh, dinosaurs being sold to people who have lots of money, totaled up to less money than what it costs to make a movie about it. I know paintings 
that have gone for triple. A painting's got to gone for hundreds of millions of dollars. Who the hell knows? So a dino, super rare dinosaur, oh, 28 million. Put it in those pocket chains. Bro wise, uh, I really enjoyed the uh, spooky Rexy beginning when they were getting the uh, oh, yeah. the bone uh, from the uh, Indominus Rex and whatnot with the lightning flash mm-hmm. and everything. That was actually really good. There was a lot of spookier elements in this film with that, plus with like the uh, nightmare ish sequence with the Indoraptor in the, in the uh, mansion and whatnot. They went for more of a darker, scarier uh, route for this film, and I actually enjoyed that part. I don't know if you paid attention at all, but Rexy looked a lot healthier throughout this film. Because oh, she, yeah. she was very malnourished and looked like she was kept in captivity. Yeah, she, she got to run around and eat she, delicious tasty she things. beefed up. <laughs> I really think this is actually a pro in this. Malcolm's point in the beginning of the film, when he was at the court, it made sense. And I actually was siding with them and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, yes, extinction animals... Try, well, it's extinct, also natural. Whatever. It's It would be different if they went to blow them up. That wouldn't be okay. Yeah. But they did that nature's going to take its course. Because uh, nature finds a way. Nature finds a way to kill dinosaurs, too. Once again, the soundtrack kills it. I think the soundtrack does very well. Um, it's really good. The uh, baby raptors, the videos of the baby raptors. Oh, that was so good. It was really good and everything. And it was actually good to see, like, uh, like Delta and the other ones back in the yeah. movie and everything. I thought that was really cool and whatnot. And it showed more, I guess, relationship growth between Blue and um, Owen when they were mm-hmm. first training her and whatnot. A couple dinosaurs that are happy that were in the film. Uh, Mr. Barry. The Barry! Barry. O- the Barry Onyx. Another uh, funny nickname, Mr. Toast, or the Car- Carnotaurus. I didn't write it down, but we can say there's also a Cenoceratops. So we can say there's more variety. Um, the fact Which is cool, com- but like does there and whatnot. canon-wise. Uh, the emotional bra- uh, Brachiosaurus uh, scene. I mm-hmm. loved it when I saw it in theaters. It actually did make me tear up a tiny bit when I saw it in theaters for the first time. <laughs> I actually enjoyed the uh, the tense transfusion scene with Rexy and Claire and Owen. Like, it was entertaining, it was right tense. Right know. It was just like, uh, uh, but with some funny stuff yeah. here and there. It was Still some blood, ride a, ride, uh, ride a dino. They didn't really do too much of it, but you can kind of slightly see uh, Dr. Henry, Henry Wu's slow transition into realizing that what he's doing is not good. And I feel like they're going to finish it and give him that turnaround at the very end. Or they're going to give him the uh, said supposed uh, gruesome death that he gets in the second book. Which I don't know which route they're going to go with that, but I know that he gets his comeuppings in the book. The cinematography, besides the, the weird camera angles, just way, the way that some of the shots look mm-hmm. in this film, uh, tying this in with another uh, pro, uh, pro I have later on, the Indoraptor on top of the roof when it's raining and the moon's like right behind it, that shot, that was, really that was a good shot and everything. White and would be up there? I have no and idea. And even the shot where the Indoraptor's doing the creepy hand thing, like with his head coming closer to the to Macy and whatnot, that was a good uh, yeah, shot. Yeah, both, because that was a recreation of this, this scene from earlier where it's like slowly creepily trying to grab her. It was, re- that was great. So cinematography, minus the weird tilts and mm-hmm. the weird camera angles in some spots, was great. First person Stiggy. You yes. said it, and it then was I was good. like, I have bump, to put it down. Bump, bump, bump. <laughs> so good. And then my last uh, pro in this film, uh, it wasn't really a complete recreation, but it was a similar recreation of the, I like to call it the shared snack scene with the two T-Rexes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, something I did not like. I did not like the nerdy guy at first um, because he was nerdy, but then he sat down. I don't like the nerdy cliches. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's a nerd. I don't do anything. I'm not cool. I'm going to get in the way. But it was kind of funny. They, they threw some funny in there. And him being serious and was able to do some stuff was kind of cool. I did not like all the cliches. It's a bunch of cliches. You know, the almost get to the elevator before, you know, it closes cliche. But then they fixed it by having the elevator open back up and then eat him. The last movie had lots of twists that were hard to see coming. This one, I felt like I could see all of them coming before they got there. And that was kind of, I kind of didn't like that. So I do not like movies that don't go anywhere. And so a good portion of the movie being in this house, it's just, I felt like they rushed all the beginning epic lava chase cool stuff so I could get to the mansion. And there's way too much, I felt like there was way too much mansion. The story was good, but I feel like they, there could have been more with it. They could have slowed you down know, a little in certain places. I want to point something out. This, like, you a lot of people compare this film to The Lost World because they, 
a dinosaur eventually gets to civilization and whatnot. But the funny thing is, this film does less island time, more civiliza civilization mm -hmm. time, where The Lost World does the exact opposite, where yep. they rush the San Diego scene with uh, the bug yep. wrecks and a lot of time on the island. And now we're going to get a whole yep. movie in civilization, so yep. fuck us, yeah. I guess. Yeah. The whole clone, she's, the, she's a clone. I felt like they could have done more with that. It was just like, oh, she's a clone. We're not even going to talk about it. Okay. Just like, yeah. by the way, you're a clone. You know, she gets to push the button. Okay. Now we're going to move on to... Do, 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 do. Take the reins. Hydrogen sulfide gas. I'm sorry, hydrogen cyanide gas. Uh, you wouldn't be able to see it like that? Number one. <laughs> Number two, uh, if it was as close as it showed in those clouds, the animals would either already be dead or have severe damage to their respiratory systems and would most likely die of complications over time. Because hydrogen cyanide, it, it, it bonds to the body, that's what's so bad. And so there, there's no getting it out of you once it's in you. And it's just... Yeah, they would all be dead. I'm they not even going to pull the whole Jurassic Science excuse bullshit anymore because, yeah, because I've said it too that many times. That has nothing to do with Jurassic days. Science and, and genetics. It's just that, okay, something that kind of upset me that I didn't like, uh, Jurassic Science, the, the, the Indoraptor, had, oh, oh, had, it was man. supposed to have uh, the, what was the last dinosaur's name? Adonis. Yeah, it had supposed to have Adonis Rex genetics. So it should have Cam ability to do camouflage. It would no fucking camouflage. You know what their excuse was? It's a prototype. It's a prototype. Exactly. You were prototype. Also, bulletproof. That's not how bulletproof work. You can't be like, by the way, it's bulletproof. What what did they steal it from? The bulletproof asaurus? The way it hunts is confusing. And what I mean by that is the girl travels inside all the way up to her to her room. Okay? Where she makes absolutely no noise. It is down like super deep in the basement. It's raining, so there's no smell scent. There's so many other things running around. And it somehow knows where she is and goes to the top. And she's like, oh, I know where this girl is. I think it has some sort of like telepathic mind. It would have no idea she was up there. I'm not even going to say signature it. Heat signature or no heat signature? Edit Mike, you can just say it for me. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> you know what Edit Mike's saying right now. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> okay. Those are the cons. That's one of the reasons this movie's kind of blech. It just kind of looks like, and I'm going to get into my cons eventually, but it just kind of feels like this film may have went through reshoot hell, or they were just kind of rushed or whatever. This is not like nitpicks. This is like big things where I'm just like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, number one, functionally moving all of the dinos from... Like, before they did the whole thing, moving them to the Lockwood Estate, the original plan was to move them to this sanctuary island that looks similar to Isla Sorna, which it obviously doesn't, was to move all the dinosaurs to this sanctuary island in a decent amount of time before this volcano goes kaboom. How are you going to move hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dinosaurs from Nublar to the sanctuary in a decent amount of time without having to do it illegally? Well, just the like even illegal, even even doing it illegally, it still wouldn't make sense. There's seventy eleven species. Uh, just like there, right there. I'm gonna get into that there. Uh, they were only gonna grab eleven species. There was more than eleven species at that fucking. Uh, yeah, they mansion. captured more than eleven species before they even got to the island. Oh, we already captured some. Uh, like no, like there was more than eleven there. And on top of that, like they're only capturing eleven specimen species or whatever. But they have. A whole shit ton in a lab somewhere in Tim Buck Buckaroo fuck fuckaroo somewhere, probably in that basement, and then it got fucking taken off to fuck city somewhere when they all broke out. So they have these random dinosaurs running through the fucking world going, rah, rah, where am I? Who are these people? Rah, 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 rah. And then scientists in a fucking uh, bumhole uh, wood cabin on a fucking mountain going, we need to make more, we need to make more. This is my biggest problem with this movie, is the fact that they talk about moving them to the sanctuary, 
but there's no fucking mention of Isla Sorna in this film at all. And it's like, the smart thing to do is instead of building a new fucking island in wherever the fuck it is, just take them and put them to Isla Sorna. Isla Sorna is not that far from Nublar. Mm -hmm. There's already dinosaurs there that they can butt heads and find out their own territories, but that would be probably the smarter thing to do is to move them onto one of your other sites that you already have dinosaurs on instead of making a whole new fucking sanctuary. Oh, this one, it would, this, this would, this, I kind of stretched this one a little bit. Because they talked about how they started all of their genetic, like, species building in the fucking basement of that mansion. If they had any live specimens in that basement, how did they manage to get any of those, if there was any down there, from a basement in a mansion to either Nublar or Sorna, without anyone noticing if they were doing it illegally? Like, how yeah. would they be able to do that? They'd have to be really, yeah. really tiny. You have to go through fucking like boat customs or shit or something like that, or hire a fucking well, they had their own smuggler. Boat. It's like that doesn't make sense. Oh, next con, nerd number two, Franklin. I did not like him. I did not like him from the start. I like did not like him to the finish. I don't like him. I'm sorry. This is another con that I wrote when the, I'm still on the island. The volcanoes erupting. There is like parades and packs and marches and just armies of dinosaurs running straight to the edge of the island. How did some of them get caught? How did Rexy get caught? How did the Baryonis get caught? How did uh, a Carnotaurus get caught? Not the one that got its throat smashed, but there was, how did, yeah. they, they, there were so many dinosaurs they didn't show. What's the one that was like trapped in the little storage yeah. room thing with the lava pouring in? How did they get you? How did they capture that? It made no sense. I don't hate the kid actor at all. I, and what she did in the film, like her, her portrayal of the character and how she delivered it, she did a really good job. It's just the story behind her character, how she's a genetically created kid mm -hmm. that's recreated from another person and everything. My thing is like adding that genetically created kid into the story to me just kind of it, convolutes the whole Jurassic Park thing. I mean, it yeah. gives a reason why Hammond and Lockwood got driven apart. Again, also, where the fuck's Lockwood been this entire yeah, fucking that's franchise? What I'm it's just, it's just like, <laughs> where the fuck's he been? What I mean is this is like, by the way, I am his best guy. friend. Yeah. Out of nowhere, other old guy who just happens to be here. You may have liked the cheesy endo smile. I, I, that's I didn't like it. I it didn't was the it. idea that it had character, like it's. Mine. It had character, but I, I did not like it at all. It was so stupid. It didn't need to be needed. If it just let it play possum without the little fucking smile. If mm -hmm. it didn't have the smile, that would have been perfectly fine. But Max is giving you the hey, hey. Calm down. If it just opened its eye and closed it, that would have been fine. We don't need the cheeky ass smile. Oh yeah. I'm one of them too. Click. You just ended the world, kid. I understand. Morals and whatnot and everything. She didn't drop a nuke. She released dinosaurs that were probably supposed to die from and again, like, hydrogen cyanide. Anyway. How she was portrayed by the, the, act, the kid actor and everything. It wasn't bad. Like She did fantastic for the part that she mm -hmm. did. And I understand morals when it comes to her releasing them because she's like, I can't do this. They're like me. I'm like them because they're created mm -hmm. in the science lab and she can relate to them. But Once you also got to have a reason yeah. to have a trilogy too. That's my uh, cons. Um, besides the fact that I am still 50-50 on the Indoraptor. Like, it has some things I liked about that was cool. But at the same time, I'm like, do we really need it? Besides the obvious message of nature versus nurture, because that's pretty much the theme of all of these movies or whatever, what do you think the other message of this film was? Let nature take its course. The, I think they're, they're pushing more of, they, not very strongly, which is one of the confusing things, but the idea that you know, they should be cared for too, that you know, they have rights, but at the same time, or is there right, the right to die? Is there right, the right to live? I mean, like, this should be cared for, but I feel like they also should just be left alone at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so I feel like I've torn this film to shreds like Jurassic Park 3. Is it all of your, on your list? Yes, it is. Uh, ratings. It sounded like, to you viewers, that I probably despise this film as much as Jurassic Park 3. But that is actually wrong. Yeah. I actually enjoy this film more than Jurassic Park 3. But I feel like this is this film is too much similar like to the lost world and like i've said before about lost world i'm very back and forth about it i have days that i like it i have days that i hate it i think this is the film that kind of gives the vibe of 
why I don't like The Lost World some days is because yeah. there's just too much scientific convoluted storylines going on. But the thing about, that's different about The Lost World is that there are cooler characters. I'm going to have to go against the critics and the audiences and not say this film is not, a, is not below a five. I will say this film is probably... movie to watch and everything if you're not trying to critique it but it's not the best Jurassic Park film but it's not the worst so it kind of sits right now it kind of sits on the lower end of the food chain like I like the Lost World more than this one yeah I'm not gonna give this movie trash score because it wasn't trash but there's a lot of stuff that I feel like I mean, there's stuff in here that I wish they would have removed. Had they removed it, it wouldn't have been a story. But they spent way too much time in the mansion. Uh, they, you know, Raptor on the roof was kind of cool, but it made no sense. I'm going to give it like a 5.7. Just because it was worth my time, which I think is a 6. But at the same time, there was some stuff in it that makes me not want to watch it again. That's a 5.7. Alrighty, so I'm going to have to cut this review right now because I just looked up and saw that my battery is almost dead. This is a running theme with some of my reviews, so it's a-okay. And it's been an hour. But, uh, so the first next time you'll catch us will be the new film Jurassic World Dominion. We're watching it tomorrow, or as of this film, this review is coming out tonight, so we're actually watching it tonight, so it'll be out uh, whatever time. I don't know, I'm rushing. This is Mike Check 95 along with Corporate Joker and Sleepy Maxi. And we are signing out and be sure to lock your doors and your windows or you might see a little coffee going. <laughs> and then you have no eye holes. <laughs> ah, Max! Give me my leg back. <laughs>